What's the difference between cost efficacy and cost effectiveness in healthcare economics? Because both of the terms actually have the same rough overall meaning, which is um, it's health gained for a technology. Like both of these are used to evaluate new medical technologies or drug treatments or whatnot. So it's health gained per dollar invested. But there is a key difference, and the difference is that cost efficacy is going to be the idealized control trial version of health gain, whereas cost effectiveness is going to be the real world, on the ground uh, health gain that, that a technology will, will see once it's out there in practice. And one way of thinking of this is if you imagine, okay, what's the health gain from a particular drug? In the control trial, they are going to exclude complicated patients. Like they'll exclude patients with a bunch of secondary illnesses. They'll exclude patients who are too old or too young to get a benefit. Um, basically, the people selected for a control trial are the ideal patients. Now, it's not just the patient selected, it's also going to be the, the behaviors associated with taking the, the drug. So it could be that uh, you don't want people to drink alcohol when they take the drug, you want them to take the drug on a regimented schedule, you want them to take the drug with food or without food, or with an eight ounce glass of water or whatnot. And during the control trial, they are going to put forward some measures to make sure that the people in the control trial take the drug exactly as directed. Like they definitely want to optimize the chances that this drug will work in the trial, as they should. Like you wouldn't want people taking it incorrectly and you wouldn't want patients with a bunch of secondary illnesses in the trial because that would just mess up the, the cleanness of the study. But it does mean that the health gained in that control trial experiment is probably way bigger than the health gained in the real world. So you put the, the drug out there in the real world after it has been approved and taken to market, and people will take the drug incorrectly. They'll take the drug with their other medications for their other secondary illnesses. And almost never do you actually get uh, real studies of every single cross-drug interaction between every possible uh, compound. So you don't really know how the drug will interact with other commonly taken heart medications or mental illness medications. And yeah, both the fact that more complicated patients are taking it and that they're taking it in a real world context where they drink alcohol and do all this other stuff that could potentially interact, means that in the real world, the drug may not have the same health gain as in the control trial. In fact, you could actually argue that some drugs that have a small benefit to health in the tr control trial setting could actually potentially harm health when you deploy them broadly in a population and market them really broadly to people who may not be the ideal uh, person to use the drug. And so on average, certainly the cost effectiveness will not be as big as the cost efficacy. Now, what should policymakers use when they're trying to decide, do they approve a drug? Do they uh, pay doctors more for using drugs that are more effective? How do they make that determination? Like, should they use cost efficacy or cost effectiveness? And there's kind of advantages and disadvantages to both. So one advantage of cost efficacy is that this data is actually available. Like you, you have clear cut data um, in, from the control trial that you can use to come up with a cost efficacy measure. And so that's a major advantage. Also, would you really want to use a measure where people are taking the drug improperly, like they're forgetting to take the medicine every other day, or they're taking it at night when they should take it in the morning? And it could be that maybe that, that's not something you want to account for, because you could just tell the patient, no, you take it in the morning if you discover they're taking it incorrectly. So there are really good reasons to prefer cost efficacy, but there's also going to be some reasons to prefer cost effectiveness. 
So one obvious advantage of cost effectiveness is that it does capture real world circumstances, which is how the medication or the technology will play out. And like the counter example to the, the case where we have somebody taking it at night instead of morning, and maybe we don't want that to be accounted for in the health gain, is what if you, um, what if 80% of the people who get the drug get addicted to the drug and that addiction, like the opioid epidemic, sort of takes over and eventually causes loss of life and loss of health and all that stuff. And if they're addicted to the drug, they're not going to be taking it as prescribed. So if the, if the requirements to take something as prescribed are so difficult that even when the patient has a doctor that's trying to guide them in the right way to take the drug, it just doesn't happen because of like natural human nature. Do you want that drug with an 80% addiction rate on the market when it might be perfect for the people who take it as prescribed? And in fact, maybe I should add addiction to this. Another reason to use cost effectiveness is that it could catch harms. Like this notion that you could have a marginally beneficial drug, but when you deploy it broadly, it has so many negative interactions with other drugs that on net, it causes harm to the population. If that happens too often, you could get a situation where the medical system is, is actually doing more harm than good. And collecting data on how drugs play out in the real world is not something that medical systems always do. Like a lot of people just go to their doctor, they get the medication, they go off and they never come back to report back how did it go, what happened, did it make it worse, which of the symptoms that has arised since then is due to that medication versus something else. It's just really messy data to collect and is not often collected. And, but, but it still may be worthwhile for that because of these other reasons. Now, another reason here is if you use this as the measure that you're tracking from a policy standpoint, you could prevent strategic behavior from pharmaceutical companies. Because one strategy for pharmaceutical companies could be to narrow the group of patients that uh, has a positive response, to the smallest possible group that, that's like clear-cut positive response. And that could be that you just sort of start with a bunch of people and figure out which of these responded well and kind of narrow in. But the, the actual marketing strategy could be much more broadly based, in which case you deploy this drug in the real world, and maybe even there's evidence from the control trial that a lot of those people in the broader market are going to be harmed. They were just cut out of the trial in, in one of the phases or at some point. And um, in which case you're deploying this strategically kind of almost knowing or partially knowing that on average it will hurt the population who might be attracted to the marketing campaign. And so there could be strategic behavior here that doesn't play out well when you deploy it broadly. And by using cost effectiveness, if you could somehow get good enough data for that, you're, you're at least keeping track of the fact that that might be happening or might not be happening. So there's advantages and disadvantages to both.